On today's edition of Winning Cures Everything, we got week 10 picks against the spread. That's right, my leans on 20 different games. Let's not waste time. Let's do this thing. Can you believe it? It's football. I've been watching it for 40 years. Are you kidding me? You're listening to Winning Cures Everything. Game day, baby. Wake up or get out. Here's your host. A confident young man. A superb athlete. Gary Seegers. Welcome in. Winning Cures Everything. I'm your host, Gary Seegers. Of course, you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at GaryWCE. We're on Twitter at Winning Cures. Easiest way to find us over there. Of course, let me go on and tell you the rundown of everything you need to know. We've got the Bet US College Football Show. This show that I'm about to do is the games that we did not cover on BetUS. So, make sure and check out. There's links in the description to Part 1 and Part 2 for this week. Uh, but the BetUS College Football Show, make sure you are subscribed over there. Best way to do it, click one of these uh, videos that's in the description and, uh, and hit that subscribe button over there. So, every Tuesday and Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, we are live covering college football. Three Dog Thursday is on this channel every Tuesday or excuse me every Thursday at 2 p.m. Central Time so make sure that you check that out. If you want to support the show, you can always become a member right here or you can go to buymeacoffee.com/winningcures. Uh that is the easiest way to do it and you get to see my numbers for the weekend based on full season numbers. So, if you want to see projected scores, all that kind of stuff, you can check it out over there. You want to see my plays for the week? Telegram, t.me slash Gary WCE. That's the best way to do it. All right, let's not waste time. Last week, I went 13 and 7 on this show. Not too bad. Not too bad. So let's dive in to game number one here. And the first game on the board we are going to hit is Friday night. Wyoming and Colorado State. This one's 7 p.m. Central Time on CBS Sports Network. Wyoming is a seven-point favorite with a total of 41 on this. My full season numbers have got Colorado State just about even. It's got Wyoming by not quite one point. Huh, okay, uh, very interesting. The The Wyoming numbers have not been good basically all year. Uh, I, I keep saying on the BetUS show that this team is 2021 Northern Illinois all over again. Like, they just keep finding ways to win games at home. And they've certainly got a big advantage with the uh, the altitude in Laramie. Uh, it's going to be windy. It's always windy in Laramie, of course. Uh, so, you start to look at these numbers. The thing that Colorado State is best at is throwing the ball. Number 37 PPA per pass. Uh, Wyoming's defense, number 90. They're number 110 in passing success rate allowed. It, that's not great. Colorado State, number 129 in penalties per game. Wyoming, they don't beat themselves. They're number 9 in penalties per game. They are number 20 in turnover margin. That kind of stuff leads to wins, certainly. Uh, but Wyoming favored by 7, that's kind of nuts, I would think. Except the power rating on the season, I've got them close to about a 6-point uh, favorite in this one. So, uh, th this stat here is the last four weeks of the season. Wyoming's offense has gotten better. Colorado State has gotten a little bit worse. They're number 100 in PPA margin. Um, Wyoming, pretty decent at passing the ball over the last four weeks. Number 47 PPA per pass. Uh, Colorado State, I mean, they are at number 123, and that's because they're number 117 in passing explosiveness allowed. But how much are you going to be able to pass in the weather, right? So I'm, I'm interested in this. Uh, the environment is... A a pretty big deal here, so something to obviously pay attention to. Uh, on offense, again, like Colorado State cannot run the ball, but Wyoming has been dreadful against the run here lately. Uh, a lot of that skewed because Boise State just ran all over them. I, I just I, I don't think that Wyoming should be favored by a touchdown here. So I'm going to take Colorado State plus the seven on Friday night. I know it's a short week. I know it's on the road, but... I think Colorado State can hang around this thing. This feels like one of those midweek uh, Mountain West games that is going to be pretty tight. So I will I will ride with Colorado State plus the seven on that one. Moving ahead, Ohio State 
heads to Rutgers on Saturday morning, uh, 11 a.m. Central Time, God's Time Zone, on CBS. Rutgers, an 18.5-point home dog, total of 42.5 on it. So let's go on and bring it up on the screen. These are the full season numbers. Uh, Big part of this game is the fact that Kyle McCord got injured towards the end of the last game. So that is something to pay attention to. Rutgers, uh, yeah, bowl eligible, like at number 27 in ESPN's strength of record. This team has been pretty impressive. When you look at the power rating, I mean, it's got Ohio State by 24 in this game. How much is Kyle McCord worth? Uh, I'm curious, right? Very curious. Uh, You start to look at these numbers, and Ohio State just has the advantage Everywhere they're they're not great running the ball, um, but I, there's so much talent at running back that I just feel like they're going to be better. You see the stuff rate. Uh, Rutgers defensive line is number one thirteen in uh, stuff rate. Ohio State is number fifty eight stuff rate allowed. So the Ohio State offensive line isn't great, but at the same time, like you're not exactly you're not going against some massive defensive line here or or offensive line. On the other side, right? Because this Ohio State defensive line, number 52 in Havoc Created. Uh, They are number 60 in stuff rate, number 31 in offensive line yards. They've got an advantage basically everywhere. Uh, Let's look at the last four weeks numbers, and it likes Ohio State by 22.47. It's got 33 to 10, basically, somewhere around there. Um, You look at the numbers. Rutgers wants to run the ball. Uh, Ohio State has an advantage there. On the other side, Ohio State, you know, better at throwing it, but they're number 49 in rushing success rate, and Rutgers' defense is number 124 in rushing success allowed over the last four weeks. I think that while a lot of people think Ohio State going on the road to Rutgers is a big deal, I think Ohio State's going to cover the number. They got to win by three touchdowns. Yeah, I I get the feeling that that Ohio State is going to do what they need to to win by three scores. So, uh, 18 and a half doesn't feel like enough to me. I am going to take the Buckeyes minus the 18 and a half there. We go to the SEC. Ole Miss is hosting Texas A&M. Ole Miss, a three-point favorite, total of 54 on this one. It's 11 a.m. Central Time on ESPN. And we pull up the numbers. We look at it. Full season would have Ole Miss favored by four. So, somewhere around 31 to 27 32 to 28, something something along those lines. Uh, the power rating has Ole Miss by almost two points here. So nothing too crazy. Uh, the Texas A&M defense, really good. Number seven in PPA per drive on the full season. The Ole Miss offense is number 12 PPA per drive on the full season. The surprising thing to me is this Ole Miss defense. They're number 57 PPA per play, but they're number 34 in PPA per drive, uh, you go down, you look at turnover margin, Ole Miss does not turn the football over. They're number eight in giveaways per game, but they're number 37 in takeaways per game. They're taking the ball away 1.63 times per game. Very surprising to me. Uh, neither one of these teams very good as far as penalties go. Uh, Ole Miss number 116, Texas A&M number 98. So I would expect to see quite a few penalties in this one. Uh, really surprising for me, Texas A&M, on the season, can't run the ball. Like They're number 38 in stuff right allowed, but they're only number 109 in offensive line yards. Uh, they're number 102 in rushing explosiveness, number 89 in rushing success rate, all that good stuff. But let's look at the full, the or not the full, excuse me, the last four weeks, and it would have Ole Miss favored by 12 points here because this Texas A&M offense over the past four weeks under Max Johnson, now granted, they've played Alabama, they've played Tennessee, etc. cetera, uh, but even with... South Carolina thrown in there, I mean, number 124 in offensive success rate, number 105 in offensive PPA per drive, this predicted points added. And this Ole Miss defense has actually gotten better. Number 13, PPA per drive on defense. Number six in defensive success rate allowed. Look, Ole Miss wants to run the ball. Texas A&M really good at stopping, uh, stopping the run. I mean, you see number 17 in stuff rate, number two in offensive line yards allowed. Ole Miss can hit explosives, but it's not like Texas A&M can really stop those. Uh, on the other side, like it's gotten worse for Texas A&M. They can't run. 
number 120 in PPA per rush. Uh, that's, I mean, that's insane. Ole Miss has actually gotten better against the run over the last four weeks. So, something to pay attention to with that because it is, Ole Miss looks good, like surprisingly good. Uh, so, I, I think this is pretty easy. Uh, I will take, I'll take Ole Miss minus the three at home against Jimbo. There's nothing Lane Kiffin likes to do more than clown Jimbo Fisher, and, uh, and I think he's going to get to do that again on Saturday morning. We stay in the SEC, and we go down to Gainesville, where Arkansas uh, heads down to the Swamp to take on the Florida Gators. Florida, a six-point favorite, total of 50-and-a-half. It's 11 a.m. Central on ESPN2, and, uh, and we'll pull these numbers up as well on this one. Full season, my numbers like Florida by .17 points. Uh, the power rating has Florida by two points here. Arkansas, coming off a bye week, just fired their offensive coordinator. There's a lot not to like about the Razorbacks. Uh, but the defensive numbers have been pretty good. Number 27 PPA per drive on defense. Uh, Florida's offense has actually been pretty good, but their defense has not been good. You know, can they get K.J. Jefferson going? You know, Rocket Sanders hadn't been playing most of the year. Uh, is he going to play here? Is he going to, you know, there's all kind of questions here. I... I am so curious. The The thing that Arkansas is best at is passing explosiveness. Well, that happens to be one of the things that Florida is best at on defense. The thing that Florida is worst at on defense is rushing explosiveness allowed. They're number 132 in the country. Well, Arkansas is only number 118. But if you get Rocket Sanders back, or if whoever is calling the plays now finds a way to get K.J. Jefferson going, potentially you could have an advantage there. So... Uh, you look at the five factors, like it, it leans Florida, especially with the talent. I, I, I look at this. I mean, this is a tough one, tough one to call. And, and if you were actually betting on this one, I mean, good gracious. Uh, let's look at the last four weeks. It would have Florida by three and a half points here. Eh. Uh, the Arkansas defense still pretty good, even though the Florida offense has been significantly better. Number nine PPA per drive on offense. And, uh, and they've been great running the ball. Number nine rushing success rate, even though they only run it like 35% of the time. I, I think that Arkansas, with the change, is going to uh, be able to do some stuff. I like K.J. Jefferson. I like the pieces that Arkansas has. I, I just think they were misused. So what we're betting on here is that somebody in that staff is able to uh, call the correct plays. And so I am willing to bet that they are able to get that figured out. Florida coming off that loss to Georgia, this kind of a letdown spot the week after uh, the cocktail party. Yeah, give me uh, give me Arkansas, plus the six on that one. I just, I think it's too many points. This feels like it could be a field goal game. It, I mean, this thing could even be, you know, 31 to 27. It could be, you know, somewhere around there. Uh, it could be 27, 24. You know, any, any number like that sounds about right. So, I will take Arkansas plus the six on the road. We go to the Big Ten. And in the Big Ten, we've got Wisconsin heading to Iowa. Not Iowa. Jesus, Lord. Uh, how about this? Indiana is going to host Wisconsin. And Indiana is a nine-and-a-half point home underdog in this. It's 11 a.m. Central Time on the Big Ten Network. And we'll pull up the numbers. Uh, total is 45 on this game. So... I, I, I don't understand the Indiana love. I know that they look great against Ohio State. Not Ohio State, Michigan. I'm going to get this right eventually. Wisconsin looked pretty good against Ohio State. Indiana looked pretty good against Penn State. Right? Yes, that's right. <laughs> I swear you guys watching this video are going to just roast me, and I deserve all of it. I'm sorry. Uh, Indiana played really well against Penn State. Penn State was in a letdown spot. Wisconsin now potentially in a letdown spot, but did Wisconsin expect to beat Ohio State? I don't think so. Uh, Braylon Allen out for this. I think he's out for this game. Uh, he was injured in the last game. Um, you know, the quarterback's out, but I think the lock kid is actually pretty good. Uh, this is full season numbers. It likes Wisconsin by 17.39 here. Number 46 PPA margin against number 125. Uh, this Wisconsin defense is still legit. 
So let's uh, let's take a look at the offense, though. They, they're better at running the ball. I think they've still got some running backs back there. Uh, they're they're going to figure out what to do. Phil Longo, really good, especially against bad defenses. And that's what you got. Number 99 PPA allowed per drive with Indiana. But let's look at the last four weeks. Let's take a look at this. It likes Wisconsin by 18.3. The defense is legit. People are running the ball nearly 60% of the time on them. They're still number 35 in rushing success allowed, number 32 in PPA allowed per rush. Indiana, that's really what they've been doing the best. Number 67 PPA per rush over the last four weeks, and they're still not good at it. Uh, But the Wisconsin offense has dropped off, so that is something to pay attention to here. I I don't get the Indiana love. I'm going to go the other way. I mean, look at these five factors. Indiana number 132 in just raw five factors rank. That is just terrible. Terrible. And Wisconsin, uh, you can see the adjustments being made at halftime. You you certainly can't see that with Indiana. So second half point margin, Wisconsin goes up to number 22 in the country after being number 61 in first half point margin. Wisconsin gets better in the second half. Indiana does not. So I know that this one is in Bloomington, but I'm I'm on the other side here. I'm going to take Wisconsin minus the nine and a half. I just I, I don't get the love. I know Wisconsin's dealing with injuries. I think they still got some depth. I'm going to trust Luke Fickle here. Uh, I like him in the coaching matchup. Uh, like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you have not already. I would certainly appreciate that. Uh, you guys have been fantastic. We, we hit 10,000 a, a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago. And uh, we're just rolling on, rolling on. Uh, you, you guys know what to do. Comment, all that good stuff. Let me know your picks on the games. We move ahead in the action. And we've got an SEC Conference USA game between Jacksonville State and South Carolina in Columbia. Uh, Columbia, South Car- excuse me, South Carolina, a 15.5 point favorite at home. Total of 55, right on that key number. 11 a.m. Central Time on ESPNU. And, of course, we look at the numbers, and these things are skewed. Now, it's it says opponent adjusted, and it is, but there's only so much that this thing can do by being opponent adjusted, right? Uh, Jacksonville State has played the number 129 strength of schedule, and South Carolina has played the number three strength of schedule. Here's where you're going to have to start to look at like some scheme stuff, right? Jacksonville State has looked slow against Conference USA teams. And I'm talking about like the player speed, not like how fast they go on offense because they do go pretty fast on offense. They're just not, they are not as talented as South Carolina. Uh, this is the the full season numbers, right? Well, let's look at the last four weeks. And it likes South Carolina by 2.39 on this. The power rating likes South Carolina by like 8.5 or so. Uh, here's where scheme comes in. You, you see that Jacksonville State is not explosive. Well, South Carolina is. And you look at plays per game. Yeah, Jacksonville State, number 13 in offensive snaps per game. That's wild. That is, that's crazy. Uh, if they play that fast, you're going to give South Carolina, who who likes to chunk the ball around, I mean, they're number 70, uh, yeah, 71 PPA per pass. Uh, they are number 37 in offensive explosiveness overall. Um, I, I'm going to have to go South Carolina. This is a not a get-right game per se, but a game to make you feel better about yourself. So I, I don't think, we need to make this too complicated. The talent difference is massive. Uh, and I think Spencer Rattler is just a significantly different level of quarterback than what Jacksonville State has played thus far. So give me uh, give me the Gamecocks. Minus, <laughs> it's the Gamecocks against the Gamecocks. Didn't think about that. Give me South Carolina. Minus 15 and a half on that one. We head to the Pac-12. Utah. Hosting Arizona State, Utah an 11-point favorite, total of 41 and a half. And uh, this one's on the Pac-12 Network at 1 p.m. Central Time. And, of course, the full season numbers right here, like 11, uh, excuse me, Utah by 11.47. The power rating has Utah by 16. 
in this thing. Uh, Arizona State getting better. Getting better. These are full season numbers. As you can see, Utah's defense, number 38 PPA per drive allowed. Um, yeah, the defense has been great. Number 15 PPA per pass. That's what Arizona State likes to do the most. They're number 50, or excuse me, number 21 in pass rate. So they throw the ball 56% of the time. Um, they're better at running the ball, but they don't do it as much. The Utah defensive line has not been as good this year. Something to pay attention to. They they find ways to get it done, obviously, but regardless, uh, let's swap it over. This, this is full season. Here is over the last four weeks. And Arizona State's offense has gotten significantly better. Utah's defense. Now, granted, Utah has played USC and Oregon back-to-back. Arizona State, I think, is a little bit different. Playing in Salt Lake City is is different for some of these teams. Oregon, I think they were ready for it. I don't know that Arizona State is going to be ready for it. So, it, while I... I think I'm going to go Utah, even though the last four weeks it says, you know, Utah 3.47. I just think the strength of schedule difference is is massive. Uh, Arizona State found Washington in, like, the perfect, perfect spot to uh, keep that a close game. So... Yeah, I, uh, I'm i going to stay away uh, from this one, but it, for show purposes, I'm going to take the Utes minus the 11 on this one. And let's see. We head to the ACC. Writer time's down. Georgia Tech heads to Virginia, and the Cavaliers are a two-point favorite at home with a total of 58.5. This one's at 1 p.m. Central Time on the CW. And the CW has had a, like, they've, they've gotten pretty good games this year, which is, I mean, a bit surprising considering their their rank in the in all the network stuff, right? So, let's look at the numbers. Full season likes Georgia Tech minus 2.81, and that makes sense. Georgia Tech's offense has been awesome. Just really good with Haynes King. They are really good. Um, yeah, I mean, you see these numbers. Number 33 PPA per rush. Uh, Virginia's defense is number 117 PPA per rush allowed, uh, number 111 in rushing success rate allowed, number 60 in rushing explosive. Offensive line yards, I mean, look at the discrepancy here. Number 116 on defense for Virginia and number 22 on offense for Georgia Tech. The five factors favor Georgia Tech, all this stuff. Now, that is full season. Let's look at what this looks like in the past four weeks. And as good as Virginia has played, Georgia Tech, surprisingly, I would have favored by 5.22 over the past four weeks. Georgia Tech strength of schedule, still tougher. Um, the, the team strength for these two teams is pretty similar. You know, I I wonder about this, uh, this Virginia rushing attack. Like, are they just going to feast on Georgia Tech here? Uh, Georgia Tech has had a pretty tough strength of schedule. Uh, but both these teams have been playing like the, the same teams, Miami, North Carolina, whatever. Uh, what I'm curious about is the same thing, Georgia Tech being able to run on Virginia. I just, I think, I think it could get pointsy. I mean, the total is what, 50, let's see, 58 and a half. So yeah, when I, when I printed the sheet out, it was 56 and a half. Um, I like Georgia Tech, even on the road here. So I, I think that's the way I'm going to lean, even though, it wouldn't surprise me if Virginia just absolutely runs all over that defense, but I think the same thing's going to happen on the other side. That's that's what I'm expecting here. So, yeah, give me Georgia Tech plus the two here, uh, even on the road. I think that's uh, I think that's the way to go. All right, let's see. Ah, we'll stay in the ACC. That's right. Florida State heads to Pitt. And Pitt is a 21.5 point home underdog. Total of 50. It's 2.30 p.m. Central Time on ESPN. And who, Pat Narduzzi, uh, stepping in it again. The players were not happy with some of his comments. And I'm sure that he explained it to the team afterwards. So maybe it's being a bit overblown. But, you know, that, that Q word is still out there. It's something to pay attention to uh, when we're when we're looking at games like this. Florida State came in ranked number four in the college football playoff rankings. They might be, they might feel a little disrespected here. Um, 
Florida State, 21.36 is what I would have them favored on the full season. Uh, Pitt is terrible at throwing the ball. Well, Florida State's really good at defending it. Pitt is a little bit better at rushing the ball. Florida State, not as good at defending that. On offense, Florida State, you know, best at throwing it. Uh, but that's what Pitt is worst at defending, right? Number 57 PPA per pass allowed by Pitt. Florida State, number 25 PPA per pass there. Uh, Florida State can be explosive. I don't know that Pitt has got dudes that can line up with the wide receivers for Florida State. Uh, so something to pay attention to there. Pitt, number 86 in turnover margin. Florida State, number 24. Yeah, uh, let's look at the last four weeks, and it it's not much better uh, Florida State by 25.7 over the past four weeks. Uh, the power rating, uh, I've only got Pitt like a 16-point underdog here, but I think the season stats will tell a different story. I think Florida State might want to run it up even with Miami coming up next week. Uh, you got to keep pace if you want to make the playoff. If you want to you know, make sure that at the end of the year, it's not, you know, that we don't have somebody that's going to jump you or whatever, right? So, Make sure that you continue to put up big-time numbers uh, because you don't want to be in a situation where Ohio State loses to Michigan or Michigan loses to Ohio State and they find a way to jump you in the final rankings, right? So, uh, yeah, I will take Florida State minus the 21-and-a-half on that one. Let's see. Virginia Tech heads to Louisville, and this one, another ACC matchup. Uh, Louisville, a nine and a half point favorite, total of 48. This one's 2.30 p.m. Central Time on the ACC Network. So, let's look at numbers. Let's see what we got here. Uh, full season numbers have got Louisville favored by 16. Now, Virginia Tech was not nearly as good at the beginning of the season as they are now since they have switched over to Kyron Drones at quarterback. Uh, still, the Virginia Tech defense has been pretty awesome. Like, I've been really impressed with this bunch. Full season, they are number 20 PPA per pass allowed, number seven in passing success rate allowed. That's going to be a fun, fun matchup to watch. By the way, this number was 11, so Louisville was favored by 11 at home. Uh, it's down to nine and a half now. Um, still don't know if that's enough points, really. Uh, Louisville's defense, super impressive. Let's. Uh, so we've got the, uh, the full season numbers here. Um, let's go through... Let's take a look at the last four weeks. And the last four weeks would have Louisville favored by only 5.67. Less than a touchdown. Uh, the Louisville offense has kind of dropped off a little bit. They are number 92 PPA per drive on offense over the past four weeks. Uh, number 108 PPA per pass. They are number 44 PPA per rush. This Virginia Tech defense is good. Number 26 PPA per pass allowed. Number 28 PPA per rush. And look, I, I see this, and while, no, Virginia Tech is not great at throwing the ball, obviously, number 117 passing success rate. Yes, Louisville's defense is great at stopping the run. I think Virginia Tech brings a different type of rushing offense than, than probably what they're used to. I'm going to roll with Virginia Tech to cover the 9.5 here. Uh, the five factors rank pretty tight on this. I think Brent Pry has got some things figured out. Uh, yeah, this seems seems to be too many points. Louisville coming off of a top 25 showdown with Duke last week. Bit of a letdown spot. Virginia Tech on the road, starting to believe in themselves a little bit. Uh, had an extra day of rest to, yeah, I guess two more days of rest. Is that right? Yeah, two more days of rest. To, uh, to prep up for this one, I'll take Virginia Tech plus the nine and a half on that. Uh, let me tell you right quick. Ticket Smarter. I know you want to buy tickets to certain events, right? We just had somebody use our promo code for Ticket Smarter to buy a bunch of tickets for the Sugar Bowl. Whoever that is, we appreciate you. Hit me up in the comments. I, I want to know, know who's buying Sugar Bowl tickets uh, right when we get all the all the stuff out for the CFP. But regardless, uh, look, use the promo code. Go to Ticket Smarter and make sure and save money. This promo code that I'm giving you is not a one-time thing. You can use it every single time that you buy tickets. WCE10 is going to get you 10 bucks off an order of $100 or more. WCE20 is going to get you 20 bucks off an order of $300 or more. 
We got big time bowl games coming up. We got LSU Bama this weekend. We got Ohio State Michigan coming up. Like these things are going to be expensive. Why not save money? And you see it on your screen now. Why not save some money while you can? WCE 20 for 20 bucks off $300 or more. WCE 10 for 10 bucks off $100 or more. Uh, and you can use it as many times as you would like to. So go ahead and take advantage of them. Ticket Smarter, they will treat you right. They treat us right for sure. So do it. Think smarter. Ticket Smarter. Don't forget to like the video and, of course, subscribe to the channel. That would certainly help things out. And, uh, again, if you want to support, you can go to buymeacoffee.com slash winningcures or just sign up to be a member on the website. We're going to have some more membership stuff coming up there. Uh, we move ahead to the Big Ten. And, of course, Illinois heads to Minnesota. The Golden Gophers, a two-point favorite here uh, with a total of 43 and a half. It's 2.30 p.m. Central Time on the Big Ten Network. So, let's pull up the numbers. Full season stats would have Minnesota favored by 4.3. Uh, I've got the Golden Gophers power rated two and a half points better than Illinois. And yet, uh, this Minnesota offense has been just abysmal. Uh, number 122 PPA per drive on offense. Uh, defense has actually been pretty good. Number 56 in that metric. Illinois on the other side, number 80 on offense, number 95 on defense. Uh, you know, PPA margin, that's predicted points added margin for the full season. Minnesota is actually number 104. Illinois is number 88. But there's a lot more that goes into uh, into these points, right? Uh, to This predicted score, which uh, full season would be about 24 to 20 somewhere around that for Minnesota. Um, turnover margin, uh, penalties per game, that all leans Minnesota's way for sure. Uh, I believe it's Johnny Newton, I believe is the defensive lineman that's going to be out for the first half because he got called for targeting against Wisconsin in the last game. Illinois is coming off of a bye here. Yeah, you know, you look at these numbers, uh, Minnesota much better in the five factors rank, all that good stuff. But uh, this is for the full season. Obviously, things change throughout the season. So let's take a look at the da, da, da. let's take a look at the last four weeks. And in the last four weeks, this thing would basically be a straight up pick 'em. Uh, Illinois number ninety nine PPA margin in the last four weeks. Minnesota number one hundred eight. Uh, you know, Minnesota's defense still really, really good. Number thirty in PPA per drive allowed. Uh, the offensive success rate, though, just continues to get worse, and they're number 130 in PPA per drive there. Um, this defense, though, is just lights out. Uh, what I'm curious about, though, is, you know, Minnesota doesn't create a lot of havoc, and I'm curious what Illinois is going to do on offense. The The five factors from the full season leans Minnesota, uh, but, I mean, these two teams are basically neck and neck when it comes to Five, uh, five factors plus talent. So, I, I think Illinois has been playing better as of late. So, I'm going to, I think I'm going to ride with the Illini here. Plus the two, uh, that's, that seems like the right way to go. So, that's, that's the way that we're going to do this thing. All right. We stay, we stay in the Big Ten, and we are going to Wrigley Field. Good gracious. I got all kind of chaos going on over at the house right now. Okay, I've had to I've had to record this thing in like three different parts. So we are going to get this show out one way or another. Uh, <laughs> absolutely bonkers. Let me write the time down. Okay, Iowa heads to Chicago to Wrigley Field to take on Northwestern in an interesting. Big Ten matchup, right? Very, very interesting. I'm, uh, I'm curious. I'm very curious. Um, yeah, it's. I, I don't know what to make of it. To be completely honest, uh, this is a weird game. A weird game. Uh, Iowa favored by five and a half here. Total is thirty, and it's two thirty p.m. Central Time on Peacock. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, it, it's absolutely. Insane. Uh, I, I think it's going to be nuts. I think it's going to be nuts. So, boom, thank you. Yes. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to pull up the full season stats. That way, if you want a screenshot or whatever, you can do that. Iowa's offensive success rate is dead last in the country for the full season. And yet, they uh, 
per the numbers, would be favored by seven points here because Northwestern not good on offense and the defense is just kind of just kind of blah, right? Just kind of blah. Uh, net points per drive, I was actually number fifty six, and that has a lot to do with you know. Um, that defense. I mean, that defense is just ridiculous. Number 17 in defensive uh, success rate allowed, et cetera. But here's here's the deal. Over the course of a season, things can change, obviously. Teams develop better, all that good stuff. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at the last four weeks, and it would have Iowa favored by four. That defense uh, is still number five in PPA per drive. The offense is number 132. Northwestern's defense has actually gotten better throughout the course of the season which makes sense because David Braun just came in from North Dakota State this year. Uh, So, obviously, it was going to take a little bit of time to implement his stuff. Uh, You see what they're doing. Iowa's not good at anything on offense. Uh, The fact that Northwestern puts up any kind of fight at all on defense uh, is certainly going to slow down Iowa. So, I, I look at this, and I see one team that doesn't play all that well in the first half but makes adjustments and is able to kind of do things on the fly, and that would be Northwestern. As far as Iowa, uh, they play well in the first half, and they're not as good in the second half. Number 32, first half point margin for Iowa. Number 59 in the second half uh, for the Hawkeyes. Number 110, first half point margin for Northwestern. Number 58 in the second half. So... I look at this, uh, it's it's at Wrigley Field, it's going to be a whole thing. I'm going to ride with Northwestern here. Uh, I know they just fired Brian Ferentz, uh, fired, uh, however you want to call that, right? So, their offensive coordinator, uh, he's still going to be there, but what what are the players going to be thinking? What's the motivation here? What's, you know, I'm curious about all that. I think Northwestern can hang around in this game. I like David Braun. I like what he's doing. So, yeah, give me... Give me Northwestern plus five and a half on that one. All right, we carry on and we move to the Big 12. Baylor hosts Houston, and the Bears are a four-point favorite with a total of 58 on this one. Uh, 2.30 p.m. is Central Time on ESPN Plus here. And let's pull up the numbers. That way you can see exactly what we're looking at. Uh, Full season stats would have Houston favored by 2.46 power rating for me has got Houston by 1.3 in this one uh I the score for full season stats would be somewhere around 26 to 20 how about 26 to 23 and a half something like that right uh Houston's defense not good but neither is Baylor's Houston's offense not good but neither is Baylor's uh let's look at what this uh, this has looked like over the past four weeks, and there we go. It would actually have Baylor favored by 2.91 uh, just based on what has happened in the last four weeks. Uh, Baylor can't run the ball, but they are throwing it like 63% of the time. <sighs> They're not good as far as like explosive passing, but Their offense is still better than what Houston's been giving up, right? Number 95 on offense for Baylor and number 121 for Houston in that spot. Uh, If Baylor tries to run the ball, Houston actually has a little bit of an advantage there. So, you know, something to pay attention to here. Uh, As far as the offense goes, Baylor um, not great at defending the pass. And Houston, number 55 over the last four weeks in passing explosiveness, uh, that number dropped significantly last week against Kansas State because they just got humiliated there. Neither team really turns the ball over much. Um, the turnover margins, you know, number 28 for Houston, number 38 for Baylor, that you get there different ways, right? So Houston doesn't really turn it over, but they don't really get a lot of takeaways per game. Baylor gets more takeaways per game, but they also give the ball up more. So something to pay attention to with that. Uh, as far as the five factors go, these two teams are really tight. Uh, when you include talent, uh, Baylor's number 115, Houston number 105. If I'm getting more than a field goal here, uh, which I am, Baylor minus four is uh, is the spread, I'm going to take Houston. 
I think that Houston can keep this within a field goal, but it, more than likely this will be the last team that has the ball is going to win the game. Uh, so give me Houston plus the four on that one. Uh, we'll, we'll stay in the Big 12. We'll stay in the Big 12. BYU gets to visit West Virginia. This one is a 6 p.m. FS1 game. 6 p.m. Central Time. That's God's time zone, of course. And look, BYU is catching 10 points. Have they learned nothing about the BYU vampires? Do they know nothing? The total on this one is 50 and a half. And yeah, the numbers, well, let's go and pull them up. That way you can see what we're looking at. Full season would have West Virginia favored by about five and a half. My power rating has West Virginia by 3.75, somewhere around there. Um, look, BYU's offense is just not, expl- like, they're not efficient. They're not explosive. They're, like, I just, I can't. How about this? They're more explosive than they are efficient because they don't get a lot of plays in. Like, they're, I mean, they're just, uh, they're number 119 in offensive plays per game. Now, part of that is because uh, standard downs rate, they're number 128. They don't have a lot of those. Uh, passing downs rate, um, they are number 128 on that one. So, like, eh, you know, it's not not great. Not great. Um they're just not efficient at all. So, obviously, West Virginia would be favored in a spot like this. Uh, let's move to the last four weeks, and that number grows. West Virginia favored by 9.05 on this one. Uh, the numbers have certainly gotten better for West Virginia's offense. They are throwing the ball uh, just all over the place. Number 25 PPA per pass in the last four weeks. And BYU's defense is number 82 in that metric. BYU, pretty good at stopping the run, right? Number 49, that's not awful. And that's what West Virginia wants to do is, I mean, they're number 20 in rush rate over the past four weeks. They're running the ball 60% of the time. BYU, I think, can actually slow them down a little bit. Over on the other side of the ball, BYU just cannot throw it. Can't throw it. Um, Number 131 PPA per pass. But if you were ever going to have any kind of success doing it, it would be against this West Virginia defense, who is number 116 in PPA per pass over the past four weeks. They're number 132 in passing explosiveness allowed, which you can see right here. Uh, PPA per rush, West Virginia number 125 over the past four weeks. Neither one of these teams commits penalties, so they don't beat themselves. And these two teams are dead even in giveaways per game, but BYU gets more takeaways. So, eh, the five factors certainly still favor West Virginia, but this is BYU in a night game. They are 20, what, 21 and 0, 22 and 0 in their last however many night games. This is certainly going to test that theory of the BYU vampires. So, yeah. Uh, I will. I, I'm I'm very curious, very curious about this. I'm going to take BYU to cover the ten. I think that number is just completely outlandish. So give me the Cougars. Give me the Cougars on that one. We move over to NBC. Purdue at Michigan. Michigan a thirty-two and a half point favorite. Total of fifty and a half. Jeez. Uh, system play on Purdue, if I've ever heard one. Uh, it's 6.30 p.m. Central Time on NBC. It's the, the Big Ten Saturday night game. And, uh, and hey, why don't we just go ahead and pull up these numbers, which are, I mean, just so heavily skewed. Uh, Michigan by 48.92. The predicted score for the full season is Michigan 53-4. to I mean, it's just... It's insane. The power rating is Michigan by 39. Uh, Geez. I mean, these numbers are just crazy. Uh, Offensive success rate, Michigan's number one. Defensive success rate, Michigan is number one. Uh, That's for the full season. Michigan is number two in PPA per pass. They only throw the ball 46% of the time. Uh, They are number 25 in PPA per rush. That's predicted points added per rush. The Purdue defense... Like, decent against the run. Number 36 PPA per rush, but they're number 60 in rushing success rate allowed. So, you know, you look at other things, offensive line yards, Michigan is 12, Purdue's defense number 49. Uh, Stuff rate allowed, Michigan is number 3, 
Purdue's defense is number 42 in stuff rate. I, you get over to the other side of the ball, and Michigan, number one in PPA per pass, number one in PPA per rush allowed. Uh, Purdue's offense, just not, not much of a chance when you look at full season numbers. But, hey, let's look over the last four weeks. Maybe it's improved for Coach Ryan Walters. And it has not. It has actually gotten worse. Over the past four weeks, the my model likes Michigan to win this game 63 and a half to nothing. Like that is that is absolutely wild. Uh net points per drive. Michigan is number one. Purdue is number 119. I don't even know what to make of this. Uh the five factors down here, Michigan number one in every category. First half and second half point margin, Michigan number one. over the. These are over the past four weeks. Uh, yeah, this is, this is a pretty easy one. Give me Michigan, minus 32 and a half. I know it's a big number, and I know the, the total is low, but that's because we don't expect Purdue to really add anything to that total. So, yeah. I'll take Michigan. I think Michigan could hit the total by themselves in this game. That's a, uh, whoo, that's wild. Uh, do me a favor, like the video, subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff. That would certainly, certainly help us out. Uh, I do appreciate it. Share the show out. Tell your friends about what I'm doing here. It's a one man operation. We're hoping to change that. Hoping to have a crew. That way I'm not having to take an entire day and split up different segments of the show so that I can get out like a, an hour-long show uh, <laughs> within 24 hours. But regardless, here we go. We got five more games we got to hit, so let's go ahead and do that. We move to the SEC. Kentucky heads to Mississippi State, and the Wildcats are a four-point favorite on the road. Total sits at 46 at 6.30 p.m. Central Time on the SEC Network. So, hey, let's look at some numbers. Full season stats like Kentucky by 6.08. Mississippi State, number 103 in PPA margin. Kentucky, number 43. Now, obviously, things have changed a little bit. Uh, State looked awful. Uh, one, in a win at Arkansas two weeks ago, but, I mean, they let Auburn just do whatever they wanted to last week. It was terrifying. Uh, Kentucky played tight with Tennessee for a while. They didn't cover last week, but, you know, 33-27, any play could have changed that game. Very interesting spot. Uh, Kentucky's offense, pretty good. You know, not not great running the ball. Uh, they don't do it often. They throw it more. They're very explosive with the pass. All kinds of things over there. Uh, if you want to see where you, you know, sometimes you need to pay attention to the numbers, figure out exactly what you need to do with it, all that kind of stuff. Let's look at the last four weeks. In the last four weeks, my numbers like Mississippi State by like 13 here. And the reason being is Kentucky is number 129 PPA per drive. That's predicted points added per drive on defense. Uh, the offense, not much better, number 76 in that metric. And Mississippi State has not been awful. I mean, they're number 90 in PPA margin to Kentucky is number 114. But remember, Kentucky has played Georgia, Missouri, and Tennessee. And Mississippi State has played Arkansas and Auburn, and I don't even remember who the other one was. Uh, oh, Western Michigan. So, yeah, that's obviously going to skew things a little bit uh, over the past four weeks. Uh, and even still, I, I can't, I mean, I guess net points per drive um, or, or probably points per play would be why this number is so crazy because it, it thinks Mississippi State would win this game uh, 29 and a half to 16 and a half. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, my power rating has Kentucky minus the six. So that is something to pay attention to. Um, I'm going to go ahead and tell you. I think this is a, a get-right spot for Kentucky. I know it's on the road. Starkville is a tough place to play, even at night. But this Mississippi State team just looked completely out of sorts at Auburn last week. Um, I'm going to take Kentucky. Minus the four. I think the Wildcats are just the significantly better team. That's what I think. 
We're going to move to the American. SMU heads to Houston. They're going to take on Rice. And right now, SMU a 12-point favorite. The total sits at 59.5. This one's 6.30 p.m. Central Time on ESPNU. And, of course, I know what you're here for. You want the numbers. Well, let's look at them. Over the full season, SMU would be favored by about 14, right? 13.96. Rice has looked pretty good in recent weeks. Uh, Big win at Tulsa a couple of weeks ago. And then last week uh, played right up to the finish with Tulane. Uh, Tulane was blowing them out early, and Rice found a way to come back in that second half, uh, which you'll be able to see here in just a minute when we look at first and second half point margin. SMU is number three in the country in PPA margin over the full season. Absolutely crazy. Uh, This includes games against Oklahoma and TCU, both of which they lost. Their offense did not get going until just a few weeks ago, really. Uh, Rice, their offense has been rolling basically all season. I mean, they they upset the Houston Cougars. Uh, They're not bad. Not bad. So... Uh, we'll look at some of these other numbers. I mean, the offense for SMU certainly has an advantage over the defense for Rice, but this is the full season numbers. Things obviously change. I've said it multiple times on this show. Things change, and they certainly have changed here. Let's click and look over the past four weeks, and in the past four weeks, SMU is number two in PPA margin. Rice is number 26. That Rice defense is still a problem, especially against the pass. SMU is throwing the ball about 60% of the time. Rice is number 110 in PPA per pass compared to SMU's offense being number 6. SMU's offense number 8 in passing explosiveness. They finally got that talent to click together. Um, Rice's defense is number 131. So second from the bottom when it comes to passing explosiveness allowed. Yeah, SMU... Doesn't they're not going to try and run much. They're not great at it, but it doesn't matter uh, because even if they did, like Rice isn't great at this. It's it's what they're best at on defense, but still, um, SMU can finish drives. Rice can't stop them. Rice has been really good at points per drive or points per scoring opportunity. They're number five in that metric. However, SMU's defense is number six. So. Again, you look at these numbers, SMU's defense is number one in PPA per drive allowed. Rice's offense is number 20, so they're going to face a a more stiff test than what SMU's offense is going to face. I know it's it's 12 and a half, uh, or 12, excuse me. Look, I'm going to take SMU. I think this is the best G5 team in the country. I don't think it's close. They are clicking right now for Rhett Lashley. He may be up for some other jobs. I know they're moving to the ACC next year. Maybe they pay him and keep him around, or he might take something else. I don't know. But what I do know is this team is buzzing right now, and I know that Rice has been good. But SMU is rolling. I will take the Mustangs uh, to cover the 12 on that one. We move to the Pac-12. And Oregon State goes to Colorado Oregon State is a 13.5 point favorite with a total of 62 on this one. This one is 9 p.m. Central Time, God's Time Zone on ESPN. And we're pulling up numbers. Oregon State, I have them for the full season favored by 19.16 in this game. So 38 to 19, somewhere around there. Power rating, uh, I have, uh, I have oh, excuse me, Oregon State by 18. Yeah, that all seems to click. Full season, Oregon State is number nine in PPA margin. Colorado is number 92. Uh, Oregon State's offense is number seven. They are just so incredibly efficient. And man, when you look at the numbers for this Colorado defense, uh, just terrible against the pass. They're number 128 in passing success rate allowed. Oregon State's offense, number 29. Uh, Passing explosiveness, Oregon State number 15 in the country. Colorado's defense is number 128. The bigger thing to look at, you know Jonathan Smith loves to run the ball. They are number 17 in PPA per rush is Oregon State's offense. Colorado's defense is number 109. Uh, Rushing success rate, I mean, that's really what what you find out about a team. 
Uh, Oregon State is number five. Colorado is number 89. Now, this is for the full season. So, let's see what the teams have done recently. And that's that's certainly something to pay attention to. Oregon State, minus 15.16. Still likes them over, uh, over that number. The defense has certainly declined. They're down to number 100 PPA per drive on defense. Uh, Colorado's still terrible on defense. Oregon State's offense is just significantly better in this spot. I know Colorado is at home, but the five factors, the first half point margins, like all of this just absolutely screams Oregon State to me. Colorado got that backdoor last week. I don't think that they get it this week. I think Oregon State is mad because of how they lost that Arizona game. I, uh, I believe that Oregon State is going to show up in a big way here. So give me the Beavers minus the 13 and a half. It's less than two touchdowns. I feel good about that. I'll, uh, I'll take Jonathan Smith and, uh, and DJU and whatnot. All right, two more games to discuss. Again, like the video, subscribe, all that good stuff. We would certainly appreciate it. All right, we're staying out west, the Mountain West. Boise State heads to Fresno State. And uh, Fresno is a three-point favorite, total of 55 on this one, 9 p.m. Central on CBS Sports Network. And, um, and my numbers would have Fresno favored by three and a half for the full season. Boise looked great against Wyoming last week. Fresno, probably lucky to get a win against UNLV. And, I mean, yet they still scored 31 points. So, what do you want to do? So, uh, full season numbers... Obviously, Boise State, terrible at defending the pass. Terrible. Mikey Keene is back, so that is something to pay attention to. Fresno has not been able to run the ball all year. I mean, the, the season-long numbers are just terrible. Uh, Boise on offense. Remember, they don't have uh, Genty anymore, uh, at least not for this week. I don't know what the, the full long-term thing is, but I, I don't believe he's going to play this week. But they did get George Halani back, so you, know, you at least got a guy with experience there. Ooh, man, this scares me. Turnover margin, Fresno is number two. Boise is number 120, and Boise has to go on the road. Boise is number 112 in giveaways per game. Uh, Fresno is number 15 in giveaways per game. Fresno, great at takeaways. Boise is not. Yeah. Uh, penalties per game, pretty even. You know, it, it, we're not talking anything crazy. The number looks drastic, you know, 58 to 9. Um, but I mean, you're talking 5.8 penalties compared to 4.10 it's whatever. It's whatever. So these are full season numbers. Let's look at the, uh, the last four weeks and man, it loves, absolutely loves Fresno in this spot. Fresno minus 8.82. And I think the biggest reason for that is, you know, the Boise is really good at defending the run. They're number 15 in PPA per rush allowed on defense. Um, they're number five in rushing success rate allowed, and Fresno is terrible at running the ball, but they only do it like 35% of the time. So I don't know how that's going to help Boise. On the other side, uh, Boise has certainly, you know, the Madsen kid has figured out how to pass the ball, but they only pass the ball 35% of the time. They're number 12 PPA per pass, number 33 passing success rate. Some of that has to do with the fact that the running game has been so good. How good is it going to be without Genty? That's what I want to know. So... Over the past four weeks, you know, points per play margin, Boise number 35, Fresno was number 60, and yet my numbers still love Fresno. Fresno is a team that makes adjustments, and you can see that down at the bottom here uh, with first half and second half point margin. In the first half, Fresno is number 45 in point margin. Uh, Boise is number 63. In the second half, Fresno is number 6. And Boise is number 71. So you can see who is going into halftime and making adjustments. Who is making changes to give them a better chance to win the game. My power rating has Fresno by about 3.5. My recent stats have got Fresno by 8.82. I'm going to ride with the uh, the Bulldogs. I'm going to take Fresno State minus the 3 at home. Uh, I know everybody's on the Boise bandwagon. You know, oh, they got right last week. All that good stuff against Wyoming. Wyoming and Fresno are two completely different teams. Styles make fights. So give me Fresno in that one. Last game on the board. 
UCLA heads to Arizona. This one's at 9.30 p.m. Central Time on FS1. And the Wildcats are three-point underdogs at home with a total of 51 on this one. Let's look at the full season numbers. Season-long numbers would have UCLA favored by 8.3. That's because that UCLA defense has just been lights out. Uh, Arizona on the season, number 15 in points, or excuse me, predicted points added per drive. They are awesome. Uh, the defense has been okay. Not great, but okay, right? Uh, now you move down and you look at UCLA and what they are doing, and we'll go on and switch over to that. Uh, UCLA's offense, not great passing the ball. Obviously, they've made a couple of quarterback changes, gone with one guy, moved to another guy, moved back to the other guy, you know, whatever. Uh, but they can run the ball. And they run it quite a bit. So, on the season, number 52 rushing success rate, Arizona's defense is number 99. Well, five factors plus talent, all that good stuff. UCLA is number 30, Arizona number 35. This is a pretty even ball game for the most part. Uh, Points per play margin, UCLA has the upper hand there. UCLA is number nine in net explosiveness. Arizona number 99. They are not explosive on offense for the full season. But again... As I've said, things change. Let's look at the last four weeks. What is it, What are these teams? Uh, how about the, what is the most recent version of these teams? And even the most recent version would still have UCLA favored on the road here by about six. My uh, power rating has UCLA by seven point eight in this one. Kind of find that surprising, to be completely honest. But either way, uh, UCLA's defense. Is just lights out. They are awesome. Um, they just they, they they don't give up much of anything. So that's going to be interesting to watch. Like who gets the upper hand here? Because I think the Arizona offense is pretty good since Fafita took over. Uh, and these numbers, by the way, the last four weeks, that's only Fafita playing quarterback. So something to pay attention to uh, on offense. Again, UCLA not really doing a whole lot as far as throwing the ball but they are running it significantly more over the past four weeks than they had. They're number 57 in rushing success rate. Arizona's defense is number 104. They are number 35 in predicted points added per rush. Arizona's defense is number 103. So UCLA, big advantage there. Um, But Arizona, big advantage in the five factors over the past four weeks. This one's going to be tight, I think. Um, Look... I, I look at this, and I think my numbers like UCLA. I'm not going against this Arizona train. Give me, give me the Wildcats plus three at home. I know everybody's picking them, but everybody's been picking them. They are awesome against the spread. They just find ways to get wins, and I think they're probably going to do the same thing here. UCLA has been awful on the road. Give me, give me Arizona. Give me Arizona plus the three on that. All right, very quickly, let's do a recap for my 20 games that I have picked thus far. I will take Colorado State plus the 7 on Friday night. I like Ohio State minus 18.5 against Rutgers. I like Ole Miss minus 3 against Texas A&M. Arkansas plus 6 at Florida. Wisconsin minus 9.5 at Indiana. South Carolina minus 15.5 at home against Jacksonville State. Give me Utah minus 11 against Arizona State. Georgia Tech plus 2 on the road against Virginia. Florida State minus 21.5. Uh, on the road at Pitt, because I think that team is almost done. Q word. Uh, Virginia Tech plus 9.5 at Louisville. And then the back half, the bottom 10. Illinois plus 2 against Minnesota. Northwestern plus 5.5 against Iowa. Houston plus 4 uh, against Baylor. BYU plus 10 against West Virginia. Michigan minus 32.5. Nobody is getting in front of that steamroller. Kentucky minus 4 at Mississippi State. Give me SMU minus 12 on the road against Rice. Oregon State, minus 13.5 on the road at Colorado. And give me Fresno, minus 3 at home against Boise. And Arizona, plus 3 at home against UCLA. Again, go to Ticket Smarter. Use the promo codes. That'd be WCE10 or WCE20. You can find out more in the description. But uh, but save some money when you're buying tickets. That's good for concert tickets, hockey, uh, anything. Football, whatever it is that you are interested in. So go ahead and check those out. 
Uh, so yes, if you want to support the show, you can become a member here on YouTube or go to buymeacoffee.com slash winning cures. If you want to follow my plays, follow me on telegram t.me slash Gary WCE telegram app is awesome. I really enjoy that thing. So go ahead and check it out. You can follow me on the socials, of course, at Gary WCE on everything, but Twitter and on Twitter, it is at winning cures. I think that wrapped it up. Don't forget to check out Three Dog Thursday. Don't forget the Bet U.S. College Football Show. You guys know what to do. Uh, sorry for this one coming out late. I've had to record like multiple different times today, and it's just been a bit chaotic. A bit chaotic. It's going to be a little crazy. We love you guys. I say we. I. I love you guys. My wife does too. She's part of this team. But uh, but I do appreciate you guys very very much. Uh, you uh. You make this a lot of fun. It's fun to be a part of this community, and and I certainly thank all of you for uh, for choosing to spend a little bit of time with me every single week. With that said, take care of yourself. Take care of each other. God bless college football, and uh, hey, I hope all your tickets cash this weekend. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and follow me on Twitter, at GaryWCE. If you want to toss in a question, you can email me, Gary, at winningcureseverything.com. Make sure and hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.